Let us pray. Eternal Rock of Ages, we worship you, we bless you, we honor you, and we thank you. Thank you for the life you've given to us, but even more so, thank you for the salvation that you've given to us, that we can pursue after you, that we can run after you, that we can love you, that we can serve you. Father, as we come before you today, we ask, O oh God, that you visit us, visit our hearts, take us deeper, for we are living in a crooked and in a perverse world. We are living in a time where your word says very perilous, very dangerous times. We are living in a time where truth is being denied, being neglected, and we know the consequences of this. Therefore, Lord, immunize us, inoculate us. Lord, cloak us with your presence so that we will show, truly be lights in this perverse world. We will truly be your people in this adulterous world. We will not be caught up with the crowd and with the world. In the name of Jesus, as we share your word today, we ask, oh God, visit us, touch our hearts, touch our destinies, visit destinies again. The steps of a good man are ordered. Order destinies again. Let people enter into supernaturalness of their destiny, for every destiny is supernatural. For you said to Jeremiah, so before I formed you, I, I knew you. I had already made you a prophet to the nations. Cause us to walk in the supernatural of our destinies. In Jesus' name, lift up or lift us up to the heights, to the mountain. The pinnacle, oh God, of, of our fulfillment of our, of our destinies in you. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. And the people said, Amen. Hallelujah. Um, I want to thank um, Pastor Rotimi and Pastor Undubisi. I want to thank you all for Pastor Jolomi, uh, Pastor Guke, and the rest of you. I want to thank you for uh, the opportunity to come and share with you again today. It is indeed my great pleasure, my great privilege to participate with you, sharing all these Sundays. I'm going to try to do my best to wrap up everything I have for this week and next week into this week so that Next week, I can hand over to Pastor Rotibi to continue because I know that by now you've probably had enough of me. So um, I think I'll, I'll do my best to wrap up uh, what I want to say this week and trust God that at the end of the day, um, he will give us the anointing, the wisdom, to be able to contemplate the destiny that he has for us. Because that is what really matters at the end of the day, that we are able to contemplate and fulfill that destiny. It doesn't matter what another person is doing. You may, somebody else may be building a, a skyrocket and a, 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 a castle, good or bad. What matters is what God wants to do with you. Jesus said to John, his apostle, say, what is your business? I mean, sorry, to Peter, regarding John, because when, when Jesus was talking, it seemed like he was saying somebody was going to not die. He was going to do a walk in his life. That person would live. 
And, and, and Peter said, Lord, is it to me? What's going to happen? Is it John? And Jesus said, just mind your business. Just mind your own business. What is your own? What does it have to do with you? Why are you bothered about what I'm doing in another man's life? So this morning, one of the first things I want to say to you is, are you bothered about your own life? What is God doing in your life? For example, in Ephesians and chapter 5 and verse 17, the scriptures tell us, it says, do not be ignorant about what the will of God is. Again, for those of us on Zoom, may I plead with you to please... Um, to please um, post, communicate, comment. That shows that you are in service. That shows that you are in service. So please communicate and uh, post your, your comments so that we can um, flow together. Thank you for your word, Lord. It says, wherefore, be, not, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Do not be unwise, but understanding what the will of God is. It says, I want to read another translation. It's called the TPT translation. It says, and don't live foolishly, for then you will have discernment to fully understand God's will and don't get drunk with wine, which is rebellion. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit continuously. So do not live foolishly and not understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not live foolishly. Thank you very much, Pastor Bruno. I just saw your message. Do not live foolishly. You must understand what the will. I mean, let's, let's unbundle this very simple statement is god saying that we must we must we shall we may we could well as we're going to discover today you're going to see that one of the secrets of god's champions those who win in god is this very simple portion of scripture understanding what the will of the Lord is. Once you can pay the right price to understand what the will of the Lord is, concerning any matter, listen, no matter how turbulent it is, no matter who, in fact, this is, this is really what it meant by if God be for us, who can be against us? Because, when you are walking in the will of God, you have the full protection and the full blessing of God. There's, there's no power on earth. There's no power in heaven. There's no power under the earth that can victoriously be victorious against you. None can match you. None can stand against you. This is what people like David understood. The first part of this message, I showed you great winners are great um, fighters. I showed you how David, <laughs> we hear about him, he fulfilled destiny, great man. But we may fail to understand that David was a great fighter. He faced battle after battle, trial after trial, and he did that with the right state of mind. You must, I must renew my mind. In fact, we are a product of how rich our mind is in God. What are you feeding your mind and your heart with? If you don't cross that first major hurdle, the model battle of casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself above the will of God. The enemy is going to tell you, you cannot do what God said you will do. The enemy is going to put you to all manner of tests. I told you how David fought complexes, the things that pull people down, really. Victim mentality, you know, the brothers don't, the father, even his parents, his parents don't even remember him. They say, bring all your children. 
and he didn't, all your sons. They didn't even remember he existed. They brought everybody but him. It was until the prophet insisted that he said, oh, okay. I said, the prophet said, don't you? Ah, God told me that there's a son here. You mean, is there no other child? Oh, oh, you're the O. You may be the O, but you're not the O for God because he has predestined you before the foundations of the earth. There is something he has for you. You see, you can't think like that and live a natural life. You can't think in a way inspired by God, energized by God, and still live a natural life. You won't. Many people don't fail to understand that our thoughts make our destiny. So that's why Proverbs says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. It is true. Understand, this, your thoughts, your mindset, is what is going to make up your destiny. How you are thinking, what you are allowing to shape up the territory called your mind, it's such a vast and deep and powerful territory. And so the Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence. Really guard your mind, your heart with all diligence for out of it comes the issues of life. From inside of you, are you building your insight? David built his insight. And that's why it's difficult for him not to kill the bear, not to kill the lion, it's difficult for him not to kill Goliath, not to, de to defeat Saul and all his antics to try and kill him, chasing him all around the place. It's difficult for him to give up when he faces even exile and nowhere to run. The only place left is the home of the Goliath that he killed, Gath. I mean, picture being pushed to the wall. Are you stranded? You must have a never say die attitude if God is with you and God is for you. Because God has spoken that I have, I have my hands and my heart with you and for you. So you, you, you must have. It's not, it's not something we uh, maybe, maybe not. You must. It's not. It, you must. When you walk with God, you must put your life in his hands and say, well, if I perish, I perish. But I know whom I have believed. I know who I have believed. Dearly beloved, do not let the circumstances around you define you. David did not do that. He allowed the circumstances of, within him to be enriched. And that's why he will sit and make poems, meditating on the word of God. The Lord is my shepherd. Even if an army should rise up against me, I will stand strong. He went on further to say, so David was this great champion who faced all sorts. He faced betrayal, faced so many things. His own son rising up against him. His own uh, uh, personal assistant or, you know, counselors, Ahithophel. They, they gather against him, but in all of that, it affected him, it did not bless him, but he still sails through all these shark-infested waters and emerges winning all the time. You are a winner in Jesus' name. You are born again to win. I, I, I shared that song with you. I remember, I think it was when we used to do uh, Beyond Music, uh, with this season of Greg and the others, the, the, the guy who sang, who came second, I remember his name was Benedict or something like that. He sang that song in a way that I had never heard it before. Born again to win. Born again to win. Listen, you're born again to win. You, you have to understand that being born again means you're born again to win. You know, born again is not born again just for nothing. You're born again. And by winning, please don't attach just material things that's about making money. No, you're, you're supposed to win in destiny. You're supposed to fulfill your destiny. You're supposed to be all that God wants you to be. You're more than a conqueror in Jesus' name. If you believe me, just wave your hands and say, Amen. Hallelujah.
You have to speak to yourself, you see, because now David understands that, look, everything is against him. So our second part was about how David encouraged himself because he's now running, gathered 400 plus men, you know, they start raising a small family or families or bring their families together. They are living in Keva Dulam and living rough. David himself has two wives by this time, has some children coming up. They're all living rough. And then one day, you know, they go out for a battle that didn't take place. And on their way back, all their children have been kidnapped. Everybody has been taken. Everybody. And of course, by the time his men get to hear it, because if you, if you, if you David, if you understand what's going on here, David is the one who says, God said we should. God said, he's always, God said it. He's always, because all these people have different types of gods. They have my rights of God. They are people he picked up from Gath area, from all these Amalekite areas, you know, so they are not Christians. They are not necessarily Jews, but he learned to live with them. That's another message for another time. How you can stand in a crooked and in a perverse amongst, and you will influence them and they will they want to influence you. you. David eventually influenced all these people. They're powerful people. But that's for another day. So, you know, but, and so they all gathered and said, they're going to stone him. He's responsible for all of this. Let them kill him. You know, how can they all their children? They cried till they couldn't cry anymore. But the Bible says, David encouraged himself in the Lord. Again, in very simple terms, I tell you, if you don't know how to encourage yourself in the Lord, you will have a tough battle ahead of you. You will not be able to penetrate and break through in this life. This life is going to throw at you a lot of curved balls. This life is good. If you can't sit down and afford to think, I won't make it, or I'm not able, you are able. You are able to do what you need to do. And those are the things. Number one is to build your faith. You, you, to fulfill divine destiny, you must build your faith. You must, you must. Look, you must. It's not, you, there are things you will never enter into without your faith being built. You must invest in your faith. It's, 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 it goes without saying. You, it's just a must. The Bible says, he that comes to God must believe that he is and is a rewarder. Because there are things that, listen, a lot of people too on the other side of the spectrum who are not Christians, they have, many of them have put their hands into things that you will never believe. They don't put it on people's face. They don't put it on people's faces. You must build your faith because you're going to come against Amalekites. You're going to come against lions. You're going to come against bears. You're going to come against Goliath. You're going to come against your own type of souls. You're going to come against Gath. You're going to come against hunger. You're going to come against, you know, stranded, you know, sinking sands and you're stranded. The Bible says, God, uh, you know, allowed men to walk all over our head. God took us through the water and he took us through the fire, but he brought us to a wealthy place. In Psalms, that is David, Psalms 66, verse 10 to 12. Uh, someone can help us post it on um, uh, Zoom. I'd appreciate it. You know, so he, he, he brought us through fire. He brought, so don't expect that you're not going to go through fire. You will. Don't, don't be deceived. Don't have false expectations and think, oh, you know, everything's going to be hunky-dory. No, 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 no. I will go through fire. You will go through fire. We will all go through our own measure of fire. And, and don't think that your own fire is the greatest type of fire. Everybody has its own type of fire. Everybody's fire is all, well, some, they're going to accuse you falsely. They are going, it's all part of any, the fire is the fire. The water is water where you almost drown. You almost drown, but there is a but, but God. And that happens by faith. Even though David says, an army rises, an army rises up against me, I'll be confident. He's, he's, he's boosting himself. And this is a skill that many of us take for granted. But we don't know how, how critical and crucial it is 
in the journey of destiny. In the journey of destiny, you must. There are times you just go and sit down after you have cried and cried. Just go back to the table. I want to encourage a lot of conf confessions. I want to co encourage from today, even in our prayer meetings, we're going to do a lot more confessions. Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And we're not doing confessions just because I, 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 Pastor Rotobi, Pastor Ndubisi, I'd like you to um, incorporate, I mean, it's a suggestion um, I, I, I think you should take seriously. I suggest that you incorporate confessions in your church services. Let people say, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let us say so until our mentality is in line, is in alignment with what we are saying. We, we, you know, I am more than a conqueror. I am born. It should, in fact, you should wake up and after you've prayed or while you're praying, it should form a part of, of who you are. You know, those days God instructed them, put the word of God on your forehead. Let it stick because you are, you are in a world where everything is trying to work against you and trying to, you know, make it seem like God is lying. So remind yourself. The Bible says, don't be like the person who looks at the word of God and then he forgets it. That's what your confession will do. See, so don't throw away your profession. Don't throw away your confession. Declare it. Oh, I give you praise, oh God, for my path is, and, and personalize it. Let know that God is speaking to you when you hear his word. Personalize it. God, my, I mean, yesterday night, my wife and myself, very late into the night, we're listening to the story of Pat Robertson, how he emerged from nowhere and took up the, the, the media world at a time where it was, it was rare by storm. If you want to achieve great things with God, you must, confession has to be part of it because it's a mentality thing. You, you must win that battle of the mind and then release the words. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. I found this out. I don't know. It's become so real to me. Every time I have faced a health challenge, every time, I remind myself, Mazino, don't, Take it for granted when you say, by the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. You know, some people just say it. Know that you are resisting life. And some, I come out of it all the time by the mercies of God. Because I know that those words are not ordinary. Sometimes I can just repeat by the stripes of healed. A hundred times I just sit in. By the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. Death and life, you know, there's no death in my body. That same spirit that raised Jesus, I've been looking at myself. <laughs> Where is it? That same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in my mother body and quickens my mother. I just, life, life. Because, again, you must know that the words that you are speaking are not mere words. They are spirit and they are life. So your mentality and your atmosphere, you are saturating your atmosphere with these words of God. They are not words of a man. They are words of God. They are promises of God. They are declarations of God concerning your life. Why are we going to neglect to do those things? But was it, how can you neglect so great a salvation? This is a great salvation. Go home, saturate your atmosphere. You know, goodness and mercy is following me. You know, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. Oh, on Friday we are declaring daily he loads me with benefits. It's the truth. Psalm 68. It says daily he loads me every day of my life. God is loading me with benefits. Whoa, what a blessing. Every day. Every day that I wake up, this steadfast love of the Lord, it never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new <laughs> every morning. Is it just newspaper? Don't read the word anymore as though you're reading newspaper. You are not reading newspaper. You know, you are not reading newspaper. Okay, dearly beloved, before I move forward to the next stage, I'm going to ask everybody. All right, let's do some confessions together. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 3, it says, because he has said he's, ne he's not going to leave me or forsake me, I can boldly say, I can make this confession. The Lord is my helper. Okay, let me give you one. Psalm 60, I, 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 Psalm 46, 
Again, please, I can see Bukola posting. Somebody, please post. Psalm 46, verse 1. It says, Thank you, Holy Spirit. Psalm 46, verse 1. God is our refuge and our strength. A present help in trouble. A this, I've been meditating on this lately. It's just so powerful. <laughs> you can't you can think like this. In the midst of trouble, trouble will, you will trouble trouble. Trouble will be scared of this life that you are releasing. Because there's no doubt there's trouble. There's no doubt that there's trouble. But that trouble is about to be given an expiry date because of this word of God. That trouble is about to be tormented. This is the torment of trouble, this word of God. And with it carried by the right mindset. I need to dwell on this a bit before I go to the next level. I really pray that I can finish this week, honestly. So, so, so this is the right mentality. This is the right word. This is life. So you go around, Father, I just thank you. God is my refuge. Is my present help. You think about it. Think about it. God is my refuge. God is my present, not future help. He's not coming to help me tomorrow. He's helping me now. I may not see it, and I will declare it. Father, I thank you. You are helping me now. I may not see it, but I know it. That's why I thank you. Others may not see it. Others may not know it, but I know it because I know you cannot lie. You are helping me now. You are my present help in trouble. This trouble is about to expire because you are helping me. I know what it means for when you help. Your help is not a vain help. You are not a weak God. You are strong. Trouble cannot defeat you. You are my present help. You know, you. this is what it means. Your mindset becomes changed. When they are threatening to kill him, David is telling my present help, even though an army, that's probably when he wrote all these things. Even though an army should rise up against me, I will be confident. Yes. Even though anything, I, I believe it's, 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 it's that same psalm. Yeah, because I did that study and I think uh, uh, there was a debate about that and we felt that it was that same psalm. Let me... Let me let me let me let me just Psalm 46. One, let me go to verse up to verse 3. It says, God is Alalapush Kalidradas. It says, God is my refuge and my strength. A very present, you know, I, I, I it's not even my present, it's a very present speech. Listen, don't doubt God. Don't doubt God. Don't think that God is not present. Don't think he's very present. You may not see him physically. The world may not see him, but you have faith. If you don't have faith, your faith, your, your, you can't see things. Faith makes you see things. You see things. You are seeing his help, but another person can't see it. Yeah, what is this guy talking about? That is all the trouble. <laughs> the word of God is now alive to you. So you see, you know that God cannot lie. So there's, there, you've clicked into something that makes you see. Are you not seeing his help? Don't worry, you still see it. Because you can't see with certain eye, you will not see it. You will see it. I can see it. Can you see it? Look at your neighbor. Can you see his help? Ask them, can you see his help? Yes, talk to him. Can you see his help? Can you see? Can you see that he's very involved in this matter right now? Tell them, can you see he's very involved? He's a very present, very present. He's very present. Oh, my goodness. That's enough to meditate on. Him. Very present. Oh, Prakatina. Very, very present. He's a very present help in trouble. Listen to this. It says, therefore, we will not fear. So there's a, there's a product of it. I will not be afraid. Though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried to deceive, if, if you want to have an earthquake, let everything outside me be shaken, cast away. I, I'm not going to fear. God is help. Is it, are you saying this? Is your problem more than earthquake now that the, the earth is being removed from underneath you and the mountains be being, everything you are seeing, the, 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 <laughs> the most shaking things happening all around you. He says, don't be moved. Because he's your very present help. 